May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Does anyone have any of those Christmas traditions that they have within their families that for them without these happening first, Christmas hasn't even started yet? Does anyone have any of these traditions? Anyone like to share any of them with us? Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving night, we always watch The Grinch to start off the... Uh... Yeah, Thanksgiving night, nice and early. The Grinch, <laughs> that's great, yeah. Nice. Nice one, Santa. That's a good one. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, our family, it depends which year, but we go over one of our family's houses and just have a party on Christmas Eve. Yeah, party on Christmas Eve. We all have these things, right? These, these, well, this, this thing that you know until it happens. I know for some folks here, it may be uh, lessons and carols. For some folks, it may be this service. Who knows? Um, for me, uh, maybe like you guys a bit, uh, it's, it's the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. <laughs> it is my absolute favorite Christmas movie because more so than any other character in any uh, Hollywood Christmas movie, uh, I relate to Charlie Brown the most. There's a scene pretty early on in the movie when Charlie Brown is talking to Linus and he says, I don't know. Something's wrong with me. It's the Christmas season. I should be happy. I should be putting the tree up. I just don't know what's wrong with me. And I love it. Linus goes, Charlie Brown, of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. <laughs> And that's me. Most years, that's me. And the more I, I do this, this priest gig, the, the more I have a chance of uh, talking to people around this time of year. And I find that Charlie Brown and I are not alone. There's something about the holiday season with all of its bells and whistles and hymns and holly jollies that brings us down. Doesn't, am I alone? Is anyone else kind of get the... Oh, thank goodness. This was going to be like the rest of the sermon was null and void. All right, Emery, this is just me and you. Now, everyone else is having the best Christmas ever. So this year... I, I tried to take things in my old hand. I wanted to explore joy a little more because I, I don't think I'd be, I'm not being melodramatic when I say that there are Christmas seasons where I, I go through the holiday joyless because there's a part of me, and I, if you've, you've been here for the last few months, you've, you've heard me go down this road before, but there's part of me, when I look at the, the cover of the New York Times or the Facebook feed, I just see there's so much wrong with the world. It's hard to hold on to that and the joy of Christmas at the same time. They seem to be in conflict with each other, and I can't let one go to hold on to the other. So I started doing some research. In the, you're all, you're all like, oh my God, first we got a sermon and research. We should, we, we should have went to the five. They had candy canes at the five, I kid you not. In the late 70s, there uh, was a study done where they found scientifically that uh, someone who won the lottery and someone who was in a, a paralyzing car accident, uh, over time, ultimately, uh, one was no happier than the other. They had the same level of joy in their life, ultimately. This created this understanding that there is a, a happiness set point. That over time, you're going to be about as happy as you're going to be. 
I know, right? Uh, the good news is coming. So then, uh, sometime later, a uh, psychologist by the name of uh, so Sonia Lubrinsky, she's the associate editor of the Journal of Positive Psychology, and she's the author of the book of uh, The How of Happiness. Uh, she finds in a study that there, that 50% of what determines that set point is biological. Uh, we have no control over it, but only 50%. That the other half of developing that set point of happiness lies within ourselves. We're getting, we're getting to the good news. She says that there are three factors that have the greatest influence on uh, how much happiness or how much joy we're going to sustain, where our set point is going to be. It's our ability to see a situation more positively, our ability to experience gratitude, and the choices we make to be kind and generous. Three things we can do. See situations more positively, ability to experience gratitude, and our choice to be kind and generous. To be positive, be kind and generous, and to experience gratitude. So here we are on Christmas Eve, and we hear the gospel story that we've heard read time and time and time and time again. We can almost recite it by now by heart. We know the story of Jesus being laid in the manger. There's an image in this story that kind of gets me every year, where they, at least the way we translate it in the English, we say that Jesus was wrapped, which for we who are mere hours away from unwrapping our Christmas gifts under the tree, it creates a certain uh, visual image in our mind that waiting for us in that manger is a gift. Waiting for the shepherds in the fields that night were the multitude of angels who come and first say, be not afraid, for you a savior is born. And then possibly the most terrifying thing could happen next, but all of the angels of heaven appear and sing glory, glory. And the shepherds find joy. So now we're at the impasse. We have here Christmas Eve with the season that tells us to be happy and joyous with the resistance that maybe that's just not possible this year. And we have this image of the baby Jesus as a gift. And we have the scientific study that tells us if we can see situations more positively, if we can accept generosity and be generous ourselves, we could somehow be more joyous and we have Jesus, this infant who grows up to be the example of sacrificial living. Each story along the way, we have an understanding that Christ lived only for others. And I wonder if the joy that we're supposed to find in this Christmas season doesn't come from the fact that this is this newborn, beautiful baby. Doesn't come from the angels that are singing on high, but comes forth that we now have an example to live by where we're going to find joy. And you know, you know that this is true because you've experienced it. You know that feeling you get when you do something good for someone. You know that experience when you pay it forward, you go through the toll, you think, you know what, I'm going I'm to pay for the guy behind me today and you feel great for about the next three or four exits, right? It's a good thing. Or maybe it was last week or maybe even last night while you're out for dinner and you left a particularly large tip because it's the Christmas season and you left feeling pretty good about yourself. This is a good thing. I don't want to poo-poo the small, the small things we do in life. Because what happens is this joy is contagious. When we give, two things happen. One, we give joy to the other person. And they experience it in their own way. 
But then we find ourselves more joyful and we go out into the world beacons of joy. And then those people we interact with, they find us more joyful and we bring joy to their lives. And it goes on and it goes on when we give. So maybe the gift this season, the reason we come to church year after year, to this space, and for some of us, and it's okay, maybe the only time, we're reminded that the joy that we find is imitating the sacrificial life that Jesus gave for us. That the baby who grew to be a man in that manger that day died upon the cross in the ultimate act of sacrifice. Each step along the way teaching a message of love and acceptance and selflessness. Christ never said it would be easy. Never said following Christ would bring us happiness. But there's something about this Christmas message that brings us joy. So this Christmas, as we leave these walls in a, in a little while, and we interact with our complicated and complex families tomorrow, I challenge us all here, reshape that Christmas. Make our interactions tomorrow purely for those who are around us, past just giving of the gifts but living our lives in a way reminiscent of the one whose birth we celebrate today. And I wonder what sort of joy is waiting for us on the other side. I bet you find it there. And when you do, make sure you share it with others. Amen. Thanks for listening. If you like the sermon, click subscribe and give us a thumbs up below. Your feedback helps us share what God is up to here in Londonderry with the rest of the internet. See you next week.